4キロアンドリーカバーレフ赤コーナー 188cm111.35kg ジャムジーニョーハーゼンストライクこの試合は来週 MMA 特別ルールで行われます1ラウンド5分2ラウンド5分3ラウンド5分インターバルは6秒で行われますグラウンド状態での膝によるトーへの攻撃サッカーボールキック見つけは認められていますまたこの試合は両者が合意したため右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ右から右へ For three rounds,、nope. five minutes each. Nope. Yellow card right off the bat. Grease for rules of strike, so we know it's something illegal. Yeah, he had grease, grease on that. Says、so、10% of his purse.、Uh, I don't agree with that personally. I don't like the rules. They take,、uh, every time they throw a yellow card, they take 10% of your purse away, and it,、um, uh, it, there's really no benefit you know, to it. All it does now is it hurts the, hurts the fighter trying to fight, and if he gets one more yellow card, then the fight's over. So anything could happen at this point. There's a jab there. Kovalev a little lighter on his feet. On his, on his feet. Oh, a right hand thrown there. Beautiful punch thrown there by Kovalev. Nice jab by Rosa Strike, like he said. Yeah. He's going to sneak him in. He'll, he'll, find, he'll find his space, especially with his little gloves on. You know, for kickboxing, obviously, he's used to having bigger gloves. There's a lot less area to, to find your way through. The way he throws it, though, at times, he likes to lean it over. Obviously, he's got a bit of a reach disadvantage here. Oh, and a nice, beautiful right hand thrown there by Kovalev. Oh, and a right hand l a n d e d there by your own strike. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I was wrong. I thought, I thought by now Kovalev would have shot. He's been hit three or four times heavy by Rosa Strike, but he's staying up. Back it up now. Here's the rules and strike. This is where he usually times that jab in the, in the、uh, right leg kick. He's looking at more counter punching now, Frank. I'm not sure. He's not much of a counter puncher, so I'm not sure why he's, he's relying on this counter punching for this particular fight. He must see something that I don't, I don't quite see from here, but he is counter punching. You, you see, he's not lead, really leading that much. When he does, when he does lead, it's just to make him throw again. Like you see there, he'd lead just to make him, just to make Kovalev throw a little bit, and he came over the top and hit him with the right. Kovalev's taking some shots here, still moving forward. You can see there, Rosa Strike paused for a moment, right when he's going to throw. A perfect opportunity for Kovalev to land that right kick. r o s e Strike for that takedown. Rosa Strike does a good job, too, of changing up the pattern and changing up the pace of his pattern. He'll jab, 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 cross, and all of a sudden jab, cross. And so you're not used to that rhythm. You're trying to block the cross that's not coming yet. And when you finally relax from the cross that didn't come, is when he throws his cross, that's what hits you. So a lot of his punches are coming through. One, you're out of position because you're throwing punches, which is why he's counter punching right now. But also, too, he does a great job of changing the pace. So we just passed the midway part of the first round. Wow. Scheduled for three. Good shot landed there by Kovalev. I was just going to say, Rosa Strike leading back to his right, Frank. Oh, nice. Oh, t a m o l k i s fell out. Couldn't tell. Two minutes to go here, round one. Outside right kick landed there with the shin bone. I got his in your rules of strike. Oh, and a right hand landed by Kovalev. Needs to follow up with something, Frank. 
The other thing that Kovalev does is that every time he gets gets a hard kick thrown at him, he stops. He stops moving. Where with Rosa Strike, every time anything lands on him, he immediately moves right after. Rosa Strike's dipping to either side right now. When he's throwing with his power, he's dipping and he just pauses there to the side, which could be an opportunity for Kovalev to use any one of his legs to throw that kick. Not much footwork by these two guys, Frank. They're just, you know, they just kind of they move gingerly one side to the other. Or not gingerly, excuse me, slowly one side to the other. And gingerly too. And here's a, oh, there's a beautiful line. Nice oh, wow. shot there by Kovalev. He's getting bloodied up though. Good shot there. Now that Rolls Strike sees that blood, you'll see him pick up the pace here. Both guys here, less than a minute to go here. Drops his right hand, this Kovalev. Dangerous thing to do with a punching power, rolls of strike. Thirty seconds to go here. Right teep there thrown by Kovalev. Look at the styles too, where Rosen strikes, his, his stance is leaning forward a little bit from the waist. But Kovalev's is very straight up and down. And look at the power that he gets, Kovalev, he gets on that overhand right. This is amazing from that position he's able to throw with so much power. Round one comes, comes to an end. Rise in heavyweights. Wow. Andre Kovalev. Yarzinho Rosenstrike, interesting first round here. I'm going to give the edge, in my opinion, make it went either way, Frank, but as we take a look at the replay here, Rosenstrike landing some crazy bombs. He's able to just get, he's able to get inside a lot better. He has a lot better hand position. Like I, th like I said in the opener, I really believe that he's got the better technical striking, but the question is what's going to happen once he gets hit. I thought for sure Kovalev would take him down to the ground by now because he's got hit several times, very heavy hit punches. His uh, jaw was getting racked over the place. His brain's getting racked over the place. I thought, at least at that point now, let's take this to the ground. But he's more content to stay up on his feet. And he hasn't been wobbled. Even those punches that have come clean through and really hurt him, like this one coming through, it changed his whole body. He really hasn't been wobbled at all where you're like, oh, he's hurt. He just kind of takes every punch in stride and keeps coming forward. That one there rolled his eyes back. How tough is Kovalev? There's some mass power coming when Rosario Lanzo strikes. Rosa Strike Lanzo strikes. Seconds out. Red Kovalev's corner, ready to go. Out, please. He's already got a yellow card. He's, He's already got a yellow card doing an old school boxing trick, yeah. Frank. Oh, mouthpiece. Got to wait 10 more seconds. Nice T nice kick here. Yeah. Back to the center of the ring they go. Nautical strike here right now. A little more bounce in Rose's strike step here, Frank. A little more bounce in his footwork. Did he get warmed up finally? Is it, you know, I'm not sure. Does he see something? He really hasn't done much difference other than a couple more leg kicks, a couple of more high kicks than we saw in the first round. Smart use of the teep there by Kovalev because Rosa Strike was coming in for that finish, Frank. With a huge flying knee that probably would have got through, but the teep kick pushed him off. What I find interesting, Joe, is that both these guys agreed to use elbows. And neither one of them had thrown an elbow yet from any position. Good point. Very good point. I wonder when you made the comment in the first round, you were surprised Kovalev hasn't gone for that takedown. After seeing Rosa Strike get toweled off, it doesn't mean that grease is gone. It's it's in the skin. Oh, and the yeah. minute he starts sweating, but there's your takedown there. He gets the takedown. I was going to say, is he concerned, though, that, he's still at that, that his opponent's going to be slippery? At this point, he doesn't care. There's a nice little elbow landed there, sneaky elbow. And I was trying to get over there, Frank. Trying to pass to that side. And I didn't, I didn't even put that together, Joe. 
know that, hey, the grease is probably still there. Let me just wait a second. Great usage of Kova to use the ring ropes to his advantage. Little rope and dope drew him into the rope, and as the ropes push back, it turns, turns the corner and puts him right down on the canvas without a problem. Rosa Strike did a good job of blocking from stepping over the mount and, and keeping from getting in a really bad position. He is caught inside. You can see his feet up in the air. He doesn't really know what he's doing from here. He, he needs to turn towards Kovalev, put both feet down on the ground, try to shoot himself back into to at least a half guard to work himself back in the guard. But he's really just kind of content, uh, uh, due to his knowledge, to just kind of sit here and keep his feet not really doing much. He's really not activating anything in his lower body. Gonna watch himself for uh, an Americana here. Hammerlock just waiting to be stolen there, waiting to be taken there by Kovalev. Kovalev's in a right great there. position. He can step over the head, he can step over the arm, go back over the legs. He's uh, remember the old school his legs are up in the air so the defense like you said Frank is not there and the old school jiu-jitsu motto is when you take someone down to the ground you know you've got to go through a bit of a stage called the floppy fish theory you pull a fish out of water you put them on the ground it's going to flop around for a little bit eventually they'll stop flopping around and then you can take advantage but in a timed fight you got to pick up the pace a little bit yeah Kovalev is kind of content right now just to kind of sit in, inside and not really do much and his takedown was so easy I wouldn't I wouldn't you know be minding, mindful of him if he went north south and if it didn't work go all the way around the other side and go half and go uh, side on the other side because it, it really hasn't going to change much position but will exhaust Rosenstrike. Now, one thing I liked about Rosenstrike, though, is every time Kovalev did try to go to mount, he was able to block it. He is smart enough to at least to put that inside leg up. Caught in half. Quick push to the knee and slide that leg right out. And there's also the ground and pound. Now, what you, you hear his corner telling him to walk it out, walk it out. Basically, get that leg out. You know, if you ever, you know, ever have a chance, you know, John Danaher from, or Coach John Danaher from Henzo Gracie's Academy in New York, the four steps of jiu-jitsu, very simple. Take your fight down on the ground, pass the legs, get to a dominant position, and then go for a submission or a finish. And, you know, in, in mixed martial arts, you're fighting a guy like this, Frank, where you know you're on the ground, and you picked it up right, of, right off the bat. He's not defending properly. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't really know what to do, set up, get to the back. Yeah, set him up. Like, get to the for, back. Force him to start turning away from you. Force him to start giving you his back. And just by natural, natural human body chest, you, can't, you put yourself in certain positions, he'll feel like he'll have to give you his back to be in a better position, which is what you want him to do. Now, though Kovalev, if this continues in this manner, you know, will we'll continue to win. Uh, remember, in Japan, they do not score round by round. They score the fight as a whole. So at Ryzen, they score the fight as a whole. Um, but in this position, is he doing enough to win this fight in terms of compared to what, you know, Rosa Strike did in the first round? Well, you know, you got you to gotta look at it right now that obviously the American style is go round by round. So you're looking at first round uh, goes to Rosenstrike, second round goes to Kovalev. But if you're judging it as a whole fight, who did more damage? Who did more of the damage? In the stand-up, it was Rosenstrike. And so how much damage was actually accomplished on the ground? You saw all these punches coming through, but it really wasn't that much damage happening. He caught a couple. Of this, like I said, his takedown was amazing. Great takedown Beautiful, pass. Yeah. Puts himself in the right position. But now once he's on the ground, he really didn't affect that much damage. But how much, you, how much do you weigh the, the takedown? Is the takedown weighed is a huge amount of damage? How are the judges looking at this fight? There's a lot of factors that can be solved into this, especially when you're looking into a full fight. Also, too, the judges tend to score what they saw last. So the fight would end right now, more than likely the judges would give it to Kovalev because he continued to dominate the, the entire second half of the fight. We still have one more round to go. Both these guys are looking for a finish. Things could change right now, but right now the fight's relatively close. To answer your question, though, when you take a look at what Kovalev did on the ground, was that more damage than what Rosenstrike did standing up? And I'd say no, because there was never a point where you thought Rosenstrike's in big trouble. Rosenstrike's in big trouble. He was never really in trouble. He was taking a beating, but not bad. Yeah, he wasn't like, oh, we got, you know, Russ got to start stepping and looking to finish his fight. 
Whereas in the stand-up in round one, you know, he bloodied up Kovalev. Kovalev was in trouble a few times. Yeah. And he's young and tough, and so he didn't fall down. You know, his head stayed still, so his brain didn't get rattled, so he's able to keep it on his feet, but a lot of those punches should have put him down. Those are damaging punches. That was, that was pretty low to me, Frank. Yeah, he's already been warned twice about that low team kick, and then just did it again. You know, one thing that Ryzen is adamant on, and not just Ryzen, Frank, the Japanese fans, they want excitement. They want to see exciting fights. They don't care whether you win or lose. Just put on a performance. <laughs> right? So, I mean, it's, it's not like they're not trying to finish. It's just not that, that pace, the high level just isn't there just yet. I mean, on paper, I looked at this fight here and thought, there's no way this one's going. Oh, that was a good shot straight. there. That was a straight. You heard him grunt. Like, I'm yep. just not going down that time. I'm just going to force myself out of this. They forced himself into the on top. Kovalev's in a bad position. because Very bad here. Rosa strike on top doesn't carry. He's not looking for position. He's looking to hit you. Those guys are the most dangerous on top of you when they're not really looking for position change. They don't really care. They're just looking to hit you. So every time that you move, you're going to catch another punch. Now, we should say that. It's not like Rosa Strike doesn't know how to fight on the ground. He does. He clearly does. Yes. His, his defense in round two was kind of like, you know, was kind of awkward. But um, even in this position here, he did have somewhat of a more dominant position. But Kovalev was able to recover, put him in the guard now. But this is not where Kovalev wants to be. He needs to figure something out here. If he can't keep, you know, Rosa Strike's posture down, he's got to get out of here. Because he's just able to, you know, lift up and throw bombs. Or if he traps that left arm. Yeah, and, and that's what he had earlier. He just, oh, good leg up. He's trying to trap, so Kevin's trying to trap his arm as much as possible, but he's just taking a beating. So there's one of those situations you got to take three or four punches to get out of there. He took two of them. Uh, uh, the knee missed to the head, the kick to the head missed when he's on his hands and knees. He was able to come up and get away from it, but now he's got a lot of ground he has to make. Both are throwing at the same time. It's Rosa Strike now trying to pick up the pace here. Another takedown attempt there. He tried to use the leg for the trip, but wasn't able successful. That was a horribly timed takedown at the wrong time, the wrong position, and now he's just laying there like. This is bad. That was a bad spot by Kovalev. Under two minutes to go here, round number three. Ryzen Fighting Federation 10. Heavyweight action here in the ring. Andre Kovalev on the bottom from the Ukraine. Yerzinho Rosenstrike from Sudame on the top. Kovalev is exhausted. Yes, he's, he's definitely tired. Both these guys physically exhausted, taking deep breaths. Less than 90 seconds to go here in the third and final round. Even the referees act, you know, signaling action. Come on, guys, let's go. Typical, typical heavyweight style, just slowing down at the end. Oh, wow. Nice spinning attempt there by Kovalev. You can hear Rosen Strikes Corner pleading with him, pleading with him to pick up the pace. Let's go for a finish here. Kovalev having none of it, going for the clinch. Referee's telling us, Frank. Yeah. Reminds me of what you ref. Yeah, I don't. Waste I don't time. Like, yeah. I know when you try to rest. Because I try to rest too. I'm, I'm trying lie. to remember which fight I watched of yours when you were refing. You had none of it in the third round. No, there's no resting here. You guys are here to fight. You know, you gotta, you gotta entertain the fans as well, but you also gotta prove that you want to be in these positions. A lot of these, a lot of these fighters are just holding on and clinching because they need a break. Ten seconds to go here. Nice. There's a chance for a trip there. But it's not going to do much, Frank. It's not going to do much. I could not 
have hunted. Th there's no way I would have believed this fight yeah. would have gone the distance. I thought for sure it was going to be done in the, by the second round. And, and honestly, if, if the fight became a takedown war, it became a ground war, I would have given the fight to Kovalev on paper. But we just saw this fight happen. I think that, that Rosenstrike won the fight. I think Rosenstrike will get the decision. I mean, anything can happen. It is mixed martial arts. But in my opinion, I think Kovalev just didn't do enough to earn a victory. Now, he if he does get the fight, Frank, I won't be... I mean, right, it's, yeah. it's fine. Don't get me wrong, but... He tried. You see that takedown right there? He was trying for a takedown. Kovalev was... And Rosenstrike was just like, no, I'm not going down. I'm going to end up on top of you. Just pushed his way through. You can see Kovalev take a lot of punishment here. He got it best. This is when we started seeing him start to fall apart uh, physically because he just was not trying to bounce back up to his feet. He was not trying to defend himself. He was not trying to get back in the takedown game. He was very content to be on his back, knowing that at least he could tie him up and not get hit as much. And we can see, you know, you got one fighter walking around with his country's flag. The other one was leaning over against the ropes. Nonetheless, we go to the judges' scorecards. Let's find out who wins this one, Frank. Despite getting a yellow card to start off the fight. Jardizinho Rosenstrike does emerge victorious, taking out Andre Kovalev. He improves his record, remains undefeated at 5-0, while Kovalev suffers his very first defeat. He's now 9-1. Well, there was a question about Kovalev. He's been fighting on the, on the regional circuit, the local circuit in the Ukraine, and he's undefeated. But what does that actually mean? Sometimes you get these, these Russians that come in, you're like, oh, you're 20-0, like, who cares? But then you, you battle him, you're like, oh, wow, he's legit 20-0. You get some guys that come in, they're 20-0, and 0, you're like, oh, this guy this is just garbage. You don't really know because you don't see him on the world stage. We haven't seen this guy yet on the world stage. He did look great. He did have his, his ability to be able to take a lot of hard punches, get great positions. What did happen, though, experience overtook him. A guy that's been in trouble before. We've seen Rosenstrike. He's been in trouble before. He learned how to uh, adapt and was able to overcome it and be able to push forward. And as a result, he's able to beat Kovalev relatively easily, even though he had to do part of it, was able to get on top and, and countering takedowns and be able to win it from the top game.